That's right. I'm quite quite happy for contractors to do all of the tests if they want to. Yeah. It, what we're saying is the minimum requirement is to test it on the AC setting and record those values. Something a little bit different for the channel today. I've assembled three greats within the industry. I've got Peter Wade from Mega. I've got Shaiyu Khan from the ECA, and I've got Ian Peacock from Luden. And it was Luden that first of all came to me with an issue. Fantastic products being returned that were serviceable because there was a little bit of misunderstanding when looking at A-type RCDs. Can you explain that problem to me, Ian? Yes, what we're noticing through calls to our technical helpline um, with electricians, we've recently changed all of our circuit protection products from AC type RCD protection to A type as standard and it's provoked a lot of calls into the helpline where um, electricians are not necessarily getting the correct testing results when they test these devices for tripping times. Okay so when they've tested them then their first reaction is to return that product maybe to the wholesaler and then that returns to you at Luden and actually yeah. there's nothing wrong with it so hopefully we can overcome those mysteries in order that we can help the electrician and that's why we've brought Peter in. So I'm thinking about testing an A-type RCD, can you talk me through the process your machine will need to do in order to validate the A-type RCD? Yeah sure, um, obviously you select the A and connecting circuit and press the test button. During that test of the, that the meter carries out, um, it actually does a very quick test to make sure you're not going to raise the um, potential on the earth. Okay. Okay. And if it's okay, it carries on with the test. Right. When we do an A-type test, we use um, a DC, uh, sorry, an AC rectified current. Right. Okay. So it's a bit like, it's a little square wave. It's 30 milliamps plus root two, which is about 42 milliamps. So you're actually getting a higher current test but in the positive type of the wave. Okay, so it's effectively trying to mimic that DC. That's correct, DC it's that trying to mimic that DC. And if that's seen on the curve, then obviously it then trips, and then the time is taken, how long it takes to trip the device. Okay, so I've done that. So I've set my RCD up to say, uh, machine up to test a 30 milliamp RCD. I've pressed my test button, I've got my results, and it knew that that device was an A-type RCD and I get my disconnection times. Those disconnection times, Shahid, are they stated for an A-type RCD in BS7671? BS7671 doesn't make any uh, difference, any change in terms of the different types of RCDs. Doesn't mention AC, A, uh, F or B in terms of testing. It just gives you certain tests, so the one times test for fault protection and the five times test for additional, plus a functional. So when I'm looking at those two disconnections, let's, let's use the most common two. So, so we're talking 40 milliseconds and 300 milliseconds. When we're there then, and we're thinking about those times, are those times relevant to a B-top? I would say that those, those times are relevant to, to all of the types because 7671 doesn't, doesn't make a distinction. There's, there's nowhere in there that, that makes that distinction. Ian. Okay. What, um, on the, on the A-type devices, obviously it's a, an AC-type breaker and an A-type breaker rolled into one. Okay. So the two characteristics are different to each other in terms of how they're tested and what they're looking for, according to the 61008 manufacturing standard. Mm. So within BS7671, the tabulation that you see under section 643, which is, which is where it derives 40 milliseconds and 300 milliseconds. There's a note in 643.8, isn't there, for the test yet? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So those, that tabulation mm -hmm. is, is a direct copy of what's in the manufacturing standard for the devices. And the, the table in the, in the standard is actually headed as alternating residual current testing. So it's on a pure AC wave. Okay. So that's, that's what the machine is injecting. And that's the result that it's expecting to see. That's what I'd advise them to test on the AC setting only. Oh, oh, um, oh, 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 that, I'm just going to pull, sorry, that's a, that's a breaking that's, news for me that, there. That's, so that's shall I just say that again? You, that's you'd what I'd advise, advise um, the, 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 the test on the AC setting only, because that's what they're used to. It's nice and simple. All the rest of the tests, um, they're, they're all product standard tests. Okay, so. It's more a product standard. However, if contractors want to do further testing, by all means. But right. as, a, as a minimum standard, okay. this, this BS7671 is... should be AC. Right, okay, so that's, that's a lovely piece of information for electricians there. So, you, you, so for, to meet the minimum requirements, and we know that BS7671 is, is, is the, the minimum, minimum standard, it's the I bare minimum. 
any RCD, as because they've all got the AC function in them, haven't they? Mm. Yes, any RCD on the AC setting, and then those two disconnection times that we're so used to and comfortable seeing, and we could walk away from that RCD confident that we'd tested it. I would say the same equivalence is um, testing breakers to 60898. Right. Do we? We take it for granted that there's the manufacturer right. that's the, the created manufacturer that product, taxes. and we're putting our trust in the manufacturer <coughs> to say that this product is worthy. That's why we've bought it, that's why we've installed it, and that's what we're, that's what we're doing, that's what we're guaranteeing. How would I test a fuse? I, 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 we'll come to you. Sorry, yeah, that, that's I, just, fine. I mean, the, um, these are lovely moments for me. Sorry. Yeah, what a moment to reflect there. I never test a circuit breaker other than operating it as a, effectively as a, a functional, functional test, just to go, lighting circuit's gone off, lighting circuit's re-energised, and I walk away and I sleep, sleep soundly at night. Mm. I don't sit, lay there worrying about it, but maybe we've elevated the RCD because we want to go above and beyond BS7671, and we've elevated it to maybe now where we're causing you a problem, because obviously we've not taken enough knowledge with us as we've changed between yeah. our settings in order to do additional testing yeah. beyond BS7671. Peter, you were going to jump yeah. in. Yeah, what I was going to say was on, on, on the test equipment that we manufacture, we have the AC setting, the A setting, and obviously the B setting. Right. And as it's, it's been highlighted here, if you've got an A breaker, you should be testing it twice. You should be testing for the AC current because it could be an AC fault that trips it. Right. And then you should also test it for the D pulse, the DC right. pulse go through it. So that should effectively be two tests. Yeah. Well, which actually becomes more than two tests because we'll do it. Because you're doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go through the set. And we know that as electricians. So again, there's a little moment for us. So if we've got an A type breaker, we've got one from Luden, we're actually going to test it. It's AC function. Do you agree with that? Yes, I mean, yeah. and that, the A-type function as well. So we're actually increasing our testing yeah. in order to. There's, there's actually no requirement from the wiring regulation to test it on the A function. Um, as Shahid says, it can be classed as a, as a manufacturer's type test almost. Mm. Um, within the regulations, at the, at the point of publishing of the 18th edition was the first time at which those regulations recognise the different types or the different classifications of, of residual current devices in terms of A, C, mm. A, F, and B. And the, the, the information that's then related to their testing is, is got to be stated that it's purely the, the trip times that it's publishing, 40 milliseconds, 300 milliseconds, even the ramp test, it, it's all relative to the alternating current test. So we're testing it on the pure AC wave on the AC setting of the machine. Yeah. On the A setting of the machine, the, the, that machine is gonna inject a different type of wave with different results. And actually the manufacturing standards look for different figures. But that's the manufacturing standards. We're talking about in-service of equipment. Yeah, so we're slightly different, which is, is to 7671. Yeah. But this, this is exactly the, uh, from the manufacturing perspective, this is where the confusion lies and you get calls to the technical line because um, what we're seeing most of is electricians are just matching the setting on the machine to the type of device that they have. So if they've got an AC, they set it to AC. If they've got an A, they purely setting it to A. And it's not the right thing. No, I think I agree with you. I think you should be tested at least twice on the t both settings. Perhaps that's more I'm, a case I'm sort of, of in the middle between the two. I think it should just be the AC setting. Because the A, there's no, but there's no, there's, there's, there's no nothing, requirement for anything no. above and beyond that. And there's nothing However, out in the marketplace in terms of regulation mm. material that gives you a reference as to the results you should look for on the mm. A setting. Okay, so, so let me put, just do, put it in for the electrician. So what we're saying there is, I, I like your one, Shai, we test it on the AC one. So you're now saying the confusion comes when we go for A. Are yes. you worried that you're getting them returned because the times don't match out? Correct. Because the standard of an A type yeah. times are not those 40 and 300, yeah. is that right? Well, you've got, you've got two different elements to this now. You've got the tripping times, the measured tripping times, and also if you were to go and do a ramp test. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a completely different ball game. So with the, uh, uh, for, just for the, uh, for the cycle of the machine, on the A setting of the machine, it now introduces a pulsed DC waveform right. of a different magnitude to the standard AC pattern. And it introduces a multiplier in the size of that wave of 1.4. Right. So when we now correlate that back to the manufacturing standards, there is, there's a different set of tables with different criteria and, and tripping uh, results that need to be achieved on the A setting. So let's make it nice and easy for us. So I could test an A-type RCBO at five times its rated value 
and get yes. a time greater than 40 milliseconds, but the standards for the A type are beyond the 40 milliseconds. And likewise, if I was testing the uh, mm. one times? No, it's still, it's, it's still a 40 millisecond uh, requirement, but the actual current that's injected is different. Right. So f f if you take the, do a little bit of, ma uh, little bit of maths, on the uh, A setting, the, if you set it on times five, the, and you're injecting a, into a 30 milliamp RCD, five times 30 is 150, but then you've got this multiplier of 1.4. Right. So the machine is actually injecting a current of 210 milliamps. Right. But according to the manufacturing standard, on the A setting, there is no 40 millisecond tripping requirement at that value. The, the 40 millisecond tripping requirement comes at a value of 0 0.35 amps, so 350 milliamps. So hence, you could see a delay in tripping on that device yeah. because the test machine isn't putting enough current to make it respond within the speed. Right, Peter, is there anything you want to add in on that one? Um, I would agree with what you said about the, the Route 2, the 1.41 yeah. add-on. Um, well, I think at the moment, there's no requirement for us to change that, and that's the way it actually does the square wave. Yeah. So we can't get around that. I'm not technical from a design point of view, so I don't know how we would get around that. We do have a variable setting on our tester, so we can up the, that's the that, current. That's how we're doing. That's how we're so we can up it. the current. Yes, you can. Um, so we can, you can meet that. Yeah. But until that sort of appears in your 7671, which the electricians and contractors are following, there is no requirement which, for it. Which yeah. is not likely to, because the you know in terms of like Shahid, go back to what Shahid was saying, you know, the, the, the additional functions of a residual current device um, don't need to be tested by the electrician at the point of installation. Sorry. They're purely testing it on the AC wave yep. and, and looking for the 40 millisecond mm -hmm. and 300 yeah. millisecond tripping times. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it, can be, it, it can also be said, I mean, if the, if the electrician at the point of installation also wanted to do a ramp test, again, you're looking for different results. On the AC, pure AC wave, you know, an RCD must be oversensitive or too, not, not so sensitive. So, um, you know, it's got, it's got a tolerance band. So it must be above 15 milliamps and up to 30 milliamps. It's got that whole band in which to trip. And, and anywhere in that band is okay. But when you do the A, the A testing of the same device, um, you know, again, go to the manufacturing standards. There's a different table and it's looking for... Uh, I mean, it's not something you could replicate on a, on a test machine. It's looking for uh, making a test at different phase angles on that, on that wave for a start. Yeah. And, but uh, the, the, certainly the, the, the milliamp tripping band opens way up. Oh, okay. It goes down as low as 10.5 and up to 42 milliamps. Right. And, that's, and that's acceptable according to the manufacturing standard, you see. So if I got the same A-type um, RCBO, say, and I was doing a ramp test and it's gone beyond the 30, actually that's fine because you said it goes yes. as high as 42. Yeah and therefore we can see people returning product. Right. And I would argue now the step is to actually say, have I carried out my AC tests? Have they passed those AC tests? The device therefore is you know, it's it's acceptable. Good. Absolutely, I love that one. Yeah, it conforms to BS7671. Yeah. I want to go on, I want to do a deeper dive. I want to go beyond BS7671. I go into my further settings on my instrument and I can't carry on those tests, but actually I've got to bring my knowledge with it. Yes. You can't start yeah. saying I'm going to delve maybe into what the manufacturer and the standards want when I, all I'm going to do is rotate a button and my brain's going to say I want the same result. Yeah. I've actually got to take my knowledge with it before maybe looking at returning product. And it's not yeah. just, just your RCBOs that maybe have been returned. We know across a lot of counters, a lot of when this A came in, that a lot of people's devices were being returned that actually were very good and, and passed by the manufacturer. And we've got to trust our manufacturer, I would suggest. And your circuit breaker one is my favorite mm. saying of all time now, so I and I'll be using that regular. I trust the circuit breaker and I just turn it on and off. But why would I not trust my RCD and come from the same manufacturer? I think you should be testing an A at both AC and A. Because yes, you can test it from AC, get the times, it's okay, meets requirements. Yep. But what if it is a slightly DC pulsed fault. Right. You want to make sure that that can operate. So you should be doing a test, yeah. at least to record that it will operate at times. With your knowledge following it. Well, yeah. so, so, so you've done the, the first test, which we've got to do, because all the devices are also AC. So all that initial testing that probably we did all those years ago when we were back at college mm -hmm. comes into play. But once we go through to say B but, or F, our knowledge has got to follow that and not necessarily 
just think I've just changed my button across because obviously we bring those other things in. You're, yeah. you're almost playing the no, manufacturer. Exactly. I mean, the, the, the clear thing here is um, any electrician is not going to have access or privy to the manufacturing standards. Correct. Uh, yeah. So they're relying on published documentation either from the manufacturer or from the test machine maker or from the regulations. Yeah. They're the three points of access. So the regulations are, are clear in what they state. Um, where the regulations need to be more defined is it now needs to actually tell you that this is, this is purely related to the pure AC waveform and it's alternating residual current testing we're looking at, at for these results. You know, there, it, there's, this is where the gap is. Um, which we're trying to narrow today. Which we're trying to narrow. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it's, I mean, I've looked in a number of manufacturers' instruction manuals for, for test equipment and honestly, I would say if, you, if you're not, if, you, if you've got the background knowledge of looking at some of these manufacturing standards and you don't know what it is you're looking for, you can fall foul, honestly. It, it, it's not... Uh, the contractor, the electrician, wants a piece of test gear that he mm. can select the right test to do the right job. Yeah. If he's got to do it more than once, that's, saying, that's about education. Yeah. You know, perhaps there should be somewhere, uh, NIC, NAPIT, these type of people should be educating their members and saying, well, did you know that you need to do this? You need to do this twice. Mm -hmm. And again, there's limited boxes in our test paper yeah. work to record our CD results. Exactly, what do you record? I, I think we, we go back uh, to, we record those AC ones. Don't that's right, I'm quite, quite happy for contractors to do all of the tests if they want to. Yeah. It, what we're saying is the minimum requirement is to test it on the AC setting and record those values, Absolutely. whether it's for fault protection or for additional, and in terms of what you're using the RCD for. Brilliant, so, so that if that RCD is being used for additional protection, Shahid, that's yeah. the, the, the highest of them two That's right, 643.8, there's a note in there that says you should test it at five times or higher, and right. I should trip within 40 milliseconds. Yeah. And that's the result you record? That's, that, that's for additional. If it's for yeah. just fault protection? At one times. And that's the, and that's 300 milliseconds if it's... So I think that's cleared it up for a lot of electricians. That <laughs> one moment there, isn't it? That yeah. we've, got two, we've just got that RCD. We've lost a box, I think, once the AFDD comes in. We seem to have slimmed down our boxes. <laughs> we won't go there. But, so what we're doing is we're looking at what the RCD's function is, and we're saying it's for fault protection. So we, we test in it, an AC, and we're recording our highest one times value. Likewise, if it was for fault protection, we're recording the highest five times. And then yeah. we can make a decision whether we want to go above and beyond BS 7671. Ooh. And we know how lots of people do. Remember, and I love it, it is the minimum. And I don't think many people want to work to the minimum, do That's they? Right. Yeah. So we all go yeah. above and beyond. Yeah. We take the test instrument, we apply a little bit more of our knowledge, mm -hmm. and we then really, we're taking on additional testing. You can use the tester to prove that it will trip under a conditions yeah absolutely and take it further if you start looking at b breakers yeah. you've got dc element yeah. you should that's a three test yeah and just to Break. clarify you said that if i've got say an a type rcd i test it i do a couple of tests as if it's an ac and then i change it and i do the test as if it's an a type a, that's correct so i double through the number of tests and b goes again and we go yeah again. I, I think where the yeah the only other thing i can say about the test equipment and all test equipment is designed in the same way has well, I might argue against that. But. <laughs> in, in, terms of, in terms of dial settings, you know, you've got you've clearly got a, 30, a ten milliamp, thirty milliamp, hundred milliamp setting for which device you're testing, but also half times, one times, five yeah. times, and they all follow this pattern. But it, the the pattern of those test machines is really geared for the AC residual current testing. It's not geared just to select times five, a type A, and you know, injecting the the amount of current that it injects is not equivalent to what's detailed in that manufacturing standard, you see. But that was always going to be different. If we we yeah. had the same thing when we manufacture test equipment. Yeah. You know, if you look at our standards, we're, we're allowed wide tolerance bands yeah. on values. And so if we gave you a 30%, plus or minus 30% on the loop test mm -hmm. as a contractor, they'd go mad so because that, the That's values right. would be... Yeah. So we don't. We offer a 5%, so we bring yeah. it down. Same with the manufacturing, I'm assuming, that you would take that manufacturing standard and you would make it your equipment to fit that. Yeah. No, that's absolutely right. I mean, manufacture, test equipment is manufactured in accordance with the standard that's detailed within that 767 one document yeah. as well. Yeah. Again, it goes back to, so if we start returning products, we actually need to be more informed than just going, it doesn't work. So yeah. you're getting stuff back that is yeah. brilliantly working, but unfortunately the person applying the test has made yes. it fall in a little bit down. Yep. So our default position would be for me, trust the manufacturer, whoever that manufacturer is, whether it be the test instrument, whether it be the actual hardware at the end. Mm -hmm. And then we can say now that we're looking at, thanks to Shahid, we're testing it as an ACRCD, we're going to apply the test 
tests and record the results basically whether it's a fault or additional protection in our columns but once we go beyond that we're taking ownership of what's going next and actually we're, we're into the realms of manufacturers then. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we brought up on this for your returns, which was mm -hmm. back to the impact driver that we've had some fun with on the channel before. I'll come out of this one. It is, <laughs> it is, you can join in from a fun element, Peter. So all of a sudden now we, we're getting misuse of products and that links into somewhere that we'd like to be uh, traveling around when we're talking about talk. So what's your feeling on the products that come back that maybe have introduced to an impact driver, Ian? Well, by far, I think any manufacturer of circuit protection devices uh, would be in this, a similar situation. And it, it, what we have as returns, um, we see a lot of damaged screw heads, okay. um, damaged threads, you know, and maybe seized, seized terminals. Um, and impact drivers seem to be the, the main culprit. Okay. And if we go to BS761, does it tell me I must use a torque screwdriver in the, in the rigs? doesn't, but it, it says that you've got to install to manufacturer's instructions. And I hear it all the time on social media, mm. it tells me nowhere in BS761, <laughs> I've got to use a torque screwdriver and I won't be getting one. <laughs> but you're quite right, does it, it references that manufacturer's instructions. Does. When you send your instructions out, do you give them the torque tolerances? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, on, actually printed on the devices themselves as well. Yeah. And people are ignoring that information and then potentially some people because we've been out with contractors that don't mm. have torque screwdrivers because already maybe an arm's already set to 2.5 <laughs> newton of torque and it's, and it's interesting because that's that's almost the same as not understanding how to test an rcd and the parameters that the manufacturers give that you're ignoring another thing the manufacturer is allowing you to do so yeah. it's telling you the torque settings and if I over torque it yeah what's what's the, what's the likely result that could be of over torquing a device First of all, damage to the conductor. Okay, yeah. Um, crushed or um, certainly, it depends on the type of conductor you're using as well, whether it's a multi-strand conductor or a, a solid conductor. Um, damage to the screw head, to the, to the screw terminal cage. So I'm thinking maybe I've ripped the threads yes. because I've gone yeah. too tight, that becomes a loose connection. Yep. I've under-tightened it, which yep. is naturally a loose connection. And yep. that leads us, doesn't it, to that, that the issue maybe of, of, of overheating. We know how our consuming units don't we, Shahid, have yep. turned over time now to metallic. Mm. Does that lead you down the path, Shahid, of saying the next logical step is to install AFDDs for this reason? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, touching it. <laughs> We've had some great conversations uh, me, me, sorry, uh, off camera about AFDDs. And he, and he said, if you bring it up, I'll just look at you and say, I'm just, not going there, yeah. just going back to the uh, impact driver, yeah. you, you talk about loose connections. Yes. That also will impact your test results if you're yeah. testing across the, the RCB directly. Right, okay. Yeah. So there's, there's an issue there. They might get a different reading or different. Yeah. And we'll circle back into that one, I think, because no. an RCD is tested offload isn't it we should have no load on when testing it isn't Correct. the easiest way not to actually connect any conductors to the top of it and just test it with no connections electrically on the outgoing side do you agree with that Ian? there's one for you so he's thinking i'll oh, batted my own back <laughs> I mean, in, in terms of in terms of residual current testing on the devices i think you've got to do it as a finished circuit to but me. obviously with no load Yes, for me, no load. no load is actually disconnect the cable at the top, Shahid. <laughs> <laughs> You've already had one batting back. It's a tricky one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, it depends how you, how you look at it. If it is, if it is uh, genuinely no load, then yes, you should be testing on the outgoing side of the RCD yeah. with the conductors disconnected. Yeah. But if you want to test it as in how would it perform practically speaking, yeah. part of the then you'd go to the yeah. end of the line. Yeah. Okay. And you test at that point. One right. thing, one thing well, we do, Gary. Sorry. Just go because that's, that's good for me. Yeah. So, you know. so, so, midpoint of a ring final circuit. You're going for then end of a radio. Is that yeah. what you're thinking? So that's that's from because that's from a, sort of worst case, isn't it? So if you think of it from a, a training perspective, because I used was. to. So so used we're looking at unloaded circuit, mm. radial circuit. You could test at the final point mm. as a, as another a bit going above and beyond, or the midpoint of a ring, but always yeah. unloaded. I think the unloaded bit's the one that catches out the electrical contractor, mm. because often RCD tests are actually done with some loads in, and that goes back to maybe well, again, yeah, if, you, if you've got a load connected to an RCD, particularly if it's a capacitive load, yes. mm. it, it really can slow down the tripping time of the device. Yeah. yeah. So and, and skew the results. I mean, what we do as manufacturer, if if someone calls into the technical line and they've got obscure results on the trip time testing, the first thing I ask them to do as the manufacturer 
is disconnect the load circuit conductors completely from the RCD. So yeah. I've just literally got the power supply to the product itself and then test directly at the terminals yeah. and look for the trip time test results then. Yeah. Then I know I've got no influence of what's in the connected so circuit. You have the same issues when you do loop testing. If you're yeah. not disconnected yeah. anything when you're doing a loop test, it can add to the value. So yeah, I would agree, you would need to disconnect it. Uh -huh. But again, ERCRs in service, sometimes you can't always turn things off, you have to leave the things on. Mm -hmm. Even though you're tripping the device, it's easier, I'm quite sure, just to go to the end of the line and do the test. There's some really interesting points brought up. I've lost three friends during this. I would suggest that maybe <laughs> that uh, when we leave this, I'll be sitting here on my own. But let, let's just recap some of those points then for us. So according to the minimum requirement, thanks to Shahid, we're saying that we're testing any RCD as an AC type RCD and recording the readings of the value that is required, whether it be for additional fault protection. And then when we go above and beyond, we need to take a little bit of ownership as we go through there. We know more about our test instrument and the product standards as we move it forward. Also, if we've got an issue testing an RCD, our first thing should be to remove all the loads altogether off the top terminals because of these capacitive loads that could be in circuit before, again, we're rushing back to our wholesalers to return a product that actually could be good. Yeah, I mean, from and a, buy from yourself a torque screwdriver. <laughs> and buy yourself a torque screwdriver. From, from the manufacturing <laughs> perspective i'd like you know i'd like much more engagement with with end contractors if they've got any problems call us and talk to us why you why you're at the job and you have the problem and maybe we can resolve the issue without the necessity the, the, the necessity i'll say that again yeah. <laughs> to, <Well, even> <laughs> <laughs> to take to take the product back to the wholesale and replace it and maybe go back to the job and find the same result again. And you're finding the same on your call centre, aren't you? You're giving information that isn't return the product, it's to help the electrician in situ in order to right. overcome the, the yeah. actual problem. Yeah. Our test equipment is capable of testing A's, ACs and Bs. Yeah. It's all in the tester, it's right. how it's used. Okay. Right, I'm going to conclude that. I thank you, Peter. Thank I you. Thank you, Shahid, and I thank you, Ian, for your time. This is a little bit different, okay? We're going to do a few more of these if this one goes down really well and I can get three other people to volunteer to come along <laughs> and have a chat with me. Hopefully, it's allowed you to have a little bit of insight into RCDs and maybe it's helped you overcome some of those problems. But as always, leave your comments below and these three will get back to all of them.